All right, I do believe I'm live on Facebook. Okay, I uh, got an exciting prophetic word, but there's an exciting prophetic word every week because remember that God doesn't have any down days. <laughs> the Lord does not have any down days. Why or how would God ever have down days? Okay, the Lord doesn't have any down days. So every time God says something, it's going to be some life come out of it. Going to be something exciting coming out of it. Going to be something life changing coming out of it. Okay. So I'm going to start. Here's my sister. I'm going to start right at 2 30 on time. I'm just giving people a time to come on. You've heard me say it before that if I come on late, people think I'm not coming. So I just started coming on early. So I'm going to start right at 2 30. So we're going to jump right in right on time. Um, I'm excited about all the stuff that. The Lord is doing, but you know, I have learned, I have learned is that man, you got to stay in step, you got to stay in sync with God. God is always doing something, and He's doing something according to His own purposes. He's doing something according to the times and the seasons that He has put in His own power. And you, if you want to get in that flow of blessing, you have to be obedient. You have to do what God says, when He says, the way He says. We're actually going to talk about to, that today in today's prophetic word. You know, you have to become like a child. You have to learn how to trust him as a child would trust their parent, which is exactly what he said. But so I'm excited about all the things God is doing in my personal life. I'm excited about the things that he's doing in the life of my family. Uh, and I mean, both, uh, well, every dimension of my family, there's your orientation family which is your parents and your siblings. That's the family you come from. Then there's your procreation family, which is the family you create, children and grandchildren. And then there is extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, stuff like that. So God is moving in every dimension of my family, orientation, extended, and procreation, procreative. And I'm, I'm just super excited about it. And I'm very, very grateful. And God is doing things that only he can do. OK, that's one thing that the Lord will show you if you walk with him. The Lord will show you that he can always do more for you than you could do for yourself. Let me say that one more time. God can always do more for you than you could ever do for yourself. OK, and so it's just a shame when people just continue to live by their own devices, because that means by definition you're missing out and what God has to offer. And it's a shame to be a Christian. It's a shame to be born again and you're not living by the word and you're not living by the spirit. Because that means you got saved, but you continue to live as a carnal person. You got you continue to live as someone that only operates by their senses. And God gives us a better option, operating by faith and operating by what the word says and operating by the power of the spirit is better than operating by your senses. But you have to grow into it. You don't just pop your fingers again at that. You don't get saved on Friday and get there on Monday. You have to grow into it. Okay. So yeah. So like I said, I'm I'm super, super excited. So almost 2 30. We're gonna start right on time at 2 30. And we're gonna jump into today's live prophetic word, which is which is a trip. But you know, the Holy Spirit explained to me why he gave it to me, why he wants me to release it. And I will explain it to you in great detail. All right. Well, hopefully some more folks are going to come on, but it's 2.30, so we start. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you thanking you for today, thanking you for your kindness, thanking you for your love, thank you for your grace, asking your God to forgive me for any sin and wash me clean and fill me with the Holy Ghost and speak through me, oh God, breathe through me. Oh, God, let the words be spoken now. What you want to be spoken, I have to decrease so you can increase. So breathe through me, oh, God, walk in me and use me so that you might be glorified in all things and that the saints might be edified, that the demons would be terrified and that sinners would be mortified, that they would become so convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit that they would not want to live one more day apart from you. Oh, God, and I know this prophetic word will give life to whoever listens to it, oh God, I just thank you. I just thank you in advance for what you're about to do. 
So God, we're looking forward to great things from you. And I declare decree in the name of Jesus Christ that signs and wonders and miracles are going to follow those that hear, believe, and obey this prophetic word. I thank you for it and I believe you for it. And we're looking for you to do great things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Today's live prophetic word, May 2nd, 2021. Today's live prophetic word is creepers. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said today's live prophetic word is creepers. Okay. It's creepers. So what do you mean by that? We'll dive in and I'll show you exactly what I mean. What would you do if you had a garden? Let's say you had a garden in your backyard and it was a precious garden and it was a garden that you loved and it was a garden that you cared for and it was a garden where you had tilled the ground and you put some, some good seed in the ground and you expecting your plants or your fruits and your vegetables, whatever you planted, your flowers, you're expecting that to come up. And then one day you go outside and you see that that garden that you love, that garden that you care for, that garden that you had invested so much of yourself in was overrun with bugs, beetles, earthworms, uh, maggots. What if you look at your precious garden and you see that garden is overrun? You'd be like, how did these things, how did these things get up in here? And who are you to try to tear up my plants over there chewing your way through my tomatoes over there nibbling on my stalks of corn? Those, those little bugs, those, those pests. Okay. They creepers. They creeped up in your garden and now they're trying to consume your harvest. They creeped up in your garden. And now they're trying to tear up your space. They creeped up in your garden and now they're trying to destroy. Now they're trying to destroy everything that you built. Okay. How would you respond? What do you think about that? What do you think about, about uh, little uh, uh, bugs and, and little pests and little roaches trying to, trying to destroy? Because it takes time to grow a garden. You can't just pop your fingers and grow a garden overnight. You got to work the ground. You got to plant the seed. If it doesn't rain, you have to add the water. Then you got to give it time. You got to let the sunlight and the soil do their work. And what would you do if after all that and you finally see something coming up, then here come these, these beetles. Just a chewing and just a, a moving. And here come these ants. And, and, and here come these maggots. OK, and here come these worms and here come these these millipedes or these centipedes. OK, so what would you do? See what you got in your garden is creepers. You got creepers. And what the spirit of God wanted me to tell you today is that just like there are creeper bugs in your garden, there's creepers in all parts of life. And a lot of people, the reason you've been hurt, the reason that you're struggling the reason that you're confused, the reason that certain things happen to you in life was because of them creepers, okay? Because you didn't protect against creepers. And we're going to look at the scripture and I'll break it down for you. First scripture we're going to look at is uh, 2 Peter. We're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> verses one through three. Second Peter chapter two, verses one through three. And we put, I'm putting that on the screen. I'm typing, so I put that on the screen. Second Peter chapter two, verses one through three. Okay. And I'm reading out of the King James Version. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness 
shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Wow. Wow. Peter is not pulling any punches. Let's dive into those words and see exactly what he means. I'm going to pull up because I want you to see the Hebrew. Excuse me. I want you to see the Greek. I want you to see the Greek on this one. Because just the English alone is incredible. There were false prophets. There were false prophets. Let's start right there. What's a false prophet? People think that someone that prophesies and misses, that makes them a false prophet. No. What makes a, a prophet false is, number one, when they ain't sent from God and they ain't sent by God. <laughs> number one. Number two, a false prophet is someone that's not speaking what the Lord said. So they're not from God and God didn't send them. God didn't tell them to go. And they, none of what they saying is what the Lord says. Okay. That's what makes a prophet false. Okay. So Peter said that there are also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. So Peter just told you there's going to be, be some people out there trying to teach you some stuff that ain't real, trying to teach you some stuff that's not right. They will secretly in, in, uh, introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destructions on themselves. Okay. Now, that phrase false prophet in the Greek means a spurious prophet, pretended foreteller, or religious imposter. Stop. Let's read what the Bible says again. A false prophet is a spurious prophet i.e. a pretended foreteller, a pretended foreteller. Somebody's not speaking about the Holy Ghost, but somebody pretending that they can or that they are. And it says a religious imposter, someone that's just religious, but they're an imposter. And Peter said, there are false prophets among the people in the past, and there will be false teachers among you. Now that phrase false teacher means a spurious teacher propagator of erroneous Christian doctrine. Oh, see, it's right there in the scripture. Now, Paula White Cain said several, it's been several months now, Paula White Cain, she was doing a live service. She was talking about how people talked about her. And she was like, it was the people in church, church that talked about her like a dog. But then she said at the end of that message, she said, so much bad teaching. She said, so much bad teaching, but it wasn't just what she said, it's the way she said it. I felt her pain when she said it. When Sister Paula White said that, she said, so much bad teaching. And I understood exactly what she was talking about. She was talking about all the, the, the religious doctrine and all the stuff that's not in the Bible and all the things that sound good and sound churchy and sound spiritual, but they're not actually scripture. And that has messed people up. Well, Peter, one of Jesus' best friends already warns us that there's going to be false prophets, people who pretended they're religious imposters among the people and false teachers, propagator of erroneous Christian doctrine is not actually Christianity. One more time. It's not actually Christianity. Okay. <clears throat> and then Peter says they will secretly introduce <clears throat> destructive heresies, okay? Destructive brings ruin or loss. We know that. What's heresy, okay? Heresy means uh, a disunion. In other words, it's disconnected from the actual true doctrine of Christ. It's disconnected from the truth. Now, I want you to sit back and think about what Peter's saying. He says they will, they will even deny the master or the sovereign Lord. Uh, who bought them, okay? That's talking about Jesus. In other words, Jesus is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He has the throne, the scepter, the crown, the diadem. He has everything and his kingdom rules over all, but they're going to deny that. They're going to deny that. They're going to be talking about how he has a peer and there's other ways to get to God besides Jesus or that, you know, Jesus isn't real or all that stuff you Christians teach, that's just a bunch of 
phoniness. It's not real. But Jesus, uh, Peter said, deny the master who bought them. See, the Lord made a statement. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me, where we get the hint from. And then the next verse says, signifying by what kind of death he would die. So in other words, the Lord says, when I am crucified on the cross, I become inescapable. The reason for that is because the Lord is saying the fact that he had to die and shed his blood is forever proof that man cannot save himself. The fact that Jesus had to hang on that cross for six hours and he had to take the beating and the whipping and the scourging and the spitting and the mocking and the scorning, he didn't do that for himself because he had no sin. He did that for us. But it's the fact that he did that that forever removes the excuse from every man, woman, boy, or girl. Because the fact that Jesus had to die and shed his blood is the eternal testimony of heaven that we couldn't save ourselves because if there was a way for God to have us save ourselves, he, he would have done it. That's in the scripture too. If there had been a commandment that could have produced righteousness, the Lord says, I would have given it. So the fact that Jesus died, it does not matter what we think about that. The fact that he died and shed his blood is heaven's eternal testimony that we cannot save ourselves. And so Peter is saying here that people are going to deny that, say that we can save ourselves apart from Christ. And then Peter said, this is how the story go in. Don't miss this part. Peter said they're going to bring swift destruction. Swift destruction. Destruction, ruin, loss, perishing, eternal ruin, okay, on themselves. And then when it says uh, bringing swift, it means swift, quick, or impending. That means it's going to happen fast, but that means it's always hanging. It's always hanging in the air, okay? Now, I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about the times you have been lulled into something you didn't have no business being in. I want you to think about the times that you have gotten over into something that you shouldn't have gotten into. Who introduced it to you? Okay. First time you, let's say you started smoking. Let's say you started getting high. Let's say you started drinking. Let's say you started fornicating. Let's say you started watching pornography. Let's say you started doing anything that you knew you shouldn't be doing. Uh-huh. Did you do that by yourself or did someone introduce it to you? Did someone bring it in your life? That's a creeper. That's somebody that came in your life for the express purpose of ruining your purity. Someone of uh, their express purpose was to corrupt you. Their express purpose was to get you all messed up. That's a creeper. Peter already said that there's going to be people like that among us as believers, false prophets, false teachers, introducing destructive ideas, even denying the blood of Christ, even denying Jesus who bought us with his blood saying that that's not true and that's not real. And he said, their end is destruction. And that's why you can't let creepers get in your life because they're going to destroy. And that's why the Holy Ghost gave me this word for today, because some of y'all out there, you got a good life. You got a good harvest. You got a good crop. You got a good family. You got a good husband. You got a good wife. You got a good career. You got good things going. But 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 there's going to be some creepers trying to get into your garden. There's going to be some creepers trying to get in your life. There's, there's going to be some creepers trying to destroy all the stuff that you built. Okay? And this is the kind of stuff that you generally don't hear, you know, on Sunday morning or often in church or whatever. And that's why God makes prophets. We have to say things that other people won't say. Have you ever wondered sometimes why prophets sound so strange, why we sound so funny, why we sound like, you know, we say stuff you don't hear other people say? Because that's our design. That's our anointing. That's our training. That's on purpose. Okay? God calls us to say things that other people ain't going to say. And the Holy Ghost told me to release this word. There's going to be some creepers. Uh, people that are married to other people, 
but they're trying to get in your life, them is creepers. They creeping on their spouse and they trying to creep up in your life. You ain't got no business getting involved with somebody else's wife. You ain't got no business getting involved with somebody else's husband, whether you are married or single. If they sit up there before God and they took vows with somebody else, you ain't got no business with them and they ain't got no business with you. But when they come around them as creepers, you don't entertain relationships like that. You ain't got no business with stuff like that. That's why it brings destruction and ruin and loss. But remember, one of the translations was eternal destruction. And what that means is forever destruction. So in other words, whatever reward you could have had both in this life and the life to come is going to be destroyed and taken away from you listening to them creepers. See, so I understand, you know, why the Holy Ghost wanted me to release this word because so many of us have not heard the word. Remember, the only way to build your faith on anything is you have to hear somebody preach it to you. You have to hear somebody prophesy to you. You have to hear somebody teach it to you. That's the way faith is built by the hearing of the anointed word of God. And that's why I tell you all the time, I ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say? And that's why I pray before I start so I can surrender my mouth because I want the Lord to speak through me because it doesn't matter what I say. I'm just a man, just like you. It matters what he says, however. And it's because of creepers that people have lost their marriage. It's because of creepers that people have lost their reputation. It's because of creepers that people have lost their children. Okay. All the stuff that you don't want your kids to do, if they did it, do you know where 98% of that comes from? Other kids. That's right. If your children got introduced to something that you didn't want them to be introduced to, sometimes it is adults. Sometimes it is adults, but 98% of the time, it's other children. It's other children that brought that thing in your child's life and told your daughter that she wasn't a real woman until she started getting promiscuous. It's other boys that told your son that he wasn't a real man until he started sleeping around with women. And now you're a grandfather before your time. And now your son has made children that he's not prepared to raise and take care of. Listening to that. Now you've built habits like uh, alcohol habits, like substance abuse habits. OK, you build habits that later on at a later stage of life, you're going to be trying to get rid of them. Or maybe a lion. Maybe you a, built a bad habit of lying because you live in that double life. So you live in that one life that you want people to see. Then you live in that other life you don't want people to see. And you're trying to cover it up. OK, well, that eventually produces destruction. And all of that could have been avoided if you had said no to a creeper. <laughs> If you had said no to somebody trying try to make you be a parent too soon, if you said no to somebody who's trying to get you hooked on a, a, a substance, if you said no to somebody that's trying to pull you off of the path of God, them is creepers. It wouldn't have impacted your reputation, wouldn't have impacted your body, wouldn't have robbed you of rewards, wouldn't have done the things it, done, it, it had done in your life. And what the scripture says is that these are religious pretenders. These are people doing this stuff in the name of Jesus. These are people teaching doctrine and calling it Christianity, but it's not actually Christianity. It's not actually biblical, which is why you hear me say all the time, read the Bible for yourself. And you hear me say all the time, test it for yourself. If you get a prophetic word from the mouth of any prophet, test it. You don't have to take it, test it. Okay. I have people come back to me and tell me all the time, you know, David, that word you gave me, it came to pass because it was by the Holy Ghost. It's not me. To prophesy means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. That means the spirit of God gives you something to say, and then he breathes through you. It's not you. So, of course, what the Holy Ghost says is going to come to pass. You see what I mean? You can test it. And anybody that's from God don't have a problem being tested. Test the word. Test the scripture. Test the prophetic. Test it. Test it and see if it don't work. Test it and see if it's not just exactly what God said both through the written word and the Bible and the prophetic word, the rhema word, test it and see. See what I mean? Because truth is not afraid of testing. You know, let that hit. Anything that's true is not afraid of being tested at all. Okay? All right, let's move on to... Okay, we're going to move on to Matthew 13, 24 through 30. I'll put that on the screen. 
And let me say something else while I'm getting this other scripture on the screen. Let me say something else. Let me explain something to you about the prophetic. God will say things to you ahead of time. Many times they don't sound like they make any sense to you in the moment. So sometimes when you listen to prophetic words, you're like, well, how's that relevant to me? But God is trying to tell you stuff ahead of time. That's why I do this broadcast. That's why I can make a video so there can be a record. So you can go back and listen to it over and over again so you can get it ahead of time. Because a whole lot of stuff that the Lord says to you is not going to manifest till later, but he's trying to warn you ahead of time. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Okay, this is the Lord talking. Another parable he put forth to them saying that he is Jesus. He put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Good God almighty. You don't understand what I just read. Let me break it down to you. Part of understanding what I just read is that when God imagined you before you came to earth, he imagined only good things. He imagined only good things. He imagined all the good things he took from your mother and her bloodline and all the good things he took from your father and his bloodline and all the gifts he put inside of you and all the good he was going to do in and through your life because that's the way God thinks of us. So what happens? We come to earth and we pass through sin. Remember that sin was a seed that the enemy sowed in the mind of Eve and she went for it. And then Adam knew that wasn't right, but he followed her anyway and he went for it and they ate the forbidden fruit. And then humanity got corrupted because of a seed that the devil sowed. So here the Lord is saying again that the enemy is a creeper that while people were asleep, the enemy came and so now stop right there. Some of y'all, the reason your kids are so messed up is because you were sleeping on the job as a parent. You weren't paying attention. Are we paying, atten uh, paying attention to anything when we sleep? And some of y'all that have been abused, the reason you got abused is because your parents weren't on it. They weren't paying attention because you got to stay on the lookout for them creepers. Your parent is the job of every parent to keep your eyes on your child, to keep your eyes on your child's life, to keep your child before the throne of God in prayer. Why? Because there's always going to be someone or something trying to get in their life and corrupt them. That's why. And that's why some of us that have been through abuse is because your father wasn't there. Your father might have been so busy working, he didn't know what was going on in your life. Maybe you didn't even live with your dad. Maybe you only saw your dad occasionally. Did he know what was going on in your life? Were you able to talk to him honestly? Because remember, a lot of the things that we're struggling to get rid of at 40, we started at 14. Think about it. Bad diet, promiscuity, cigarettes, weed, alcohol, pornography, profanity, disobedience. You don't start that stuff when you 40. <laughs> you start that stuff when you 14. Think about it. That's because somebody sowed it into your life. They sowed it into your life. Okay. And it's your job as a parent to be the watchman on the wall for your children because Jesus told you the devil comes in while men are sleeping. While we're sleeping, just let that hit. Shows you that the enemy is a coward, that the enemy don't play fair. He's not going to come while you up and awake and walk around. He's going to come while you're sleeping. Just let that hit. And he's going to try to plant stuff in your head, in your life. And the Lord says that the servants came to him and said, Lord, didn't you plant good seed? 
then where did these tears come from? And the Lord's response was, an enemy had done this. See, the things in your life that are not from God were sowed by the devil, sowed by original sin, which was a thought that came from Satan. Remember that Satan did not overpower Eve. He gave her some new information and deceived her. He did not overpower. He did not make her eat that fruit. He put something else in her head and she went with it and she ate the fruit. And then Adam knew that wasn't right, but followed her anyway. So original sin comes from the first family, from a seed planted by the devil, okay? While, because Adam was standing right there as a guardian of his family, he knew, but he didn't say anything. He knew what was going down, wasn't right, but he didn't say anything and God held them all responsible. God cursed a man, a woman, a snake, and a devil. Go back and read Genesis 3. God cursed a man, the woman, the snake, and the devil. They were all responsible for what they did in the act of sin. So stop blaming men for everything. God holds you responsible for your participation in the act of sin. Okay? So that's why once you know that, that ought to give you courage to understand that when somebody trying to creep up in your life with some stuff that's going to destroy you, you say, uh-uh. You say, nope. You put up the hand. You said, nope. You're not getting in my life. And if they get offended, then let them be offended because they were trying to destroy you. The Lord said it happens when you're not paying attention. It happens when you sleep. Okay? It does not just mean when you're physically asleep. It means when you're not doing your job, when you're not on top of your game. It means when you're not sharp, when you're not paying attention to what's going on around you. That's how wrong ideas get in. Okay? And the Lord said, the enemy has done this. And the Lord says that he's going to let it grow together for a while until the time of harvest, harvest. And then the Lord says, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. That's why when the Lord comes in your life, he comes in with a purging fire. He comes in, he's going to bind up all that stuff that was from the devil, from the flesh, that wasn't from him. And he's going to burn it out of your life. And then he's going to take the wheat into his barn. In other words, the good stuff, the real you, the things he put inside of you, all that stuff is what's going in the barn. All the other stuff is going in the fire. Now, can you see that Christians that don't allow Jesus to do that in their lives are foolish? Because when you stand before God in heaven, if you didn't know this, we have to go through fire again in heaven. If you didn't know that. Let me look that scripture up so you see I'm not making that up. Okay, that scripture is 1 Corinthians 3.13. Okay, let me put that on the screen so you can look it up for yourself. That is 1 Corinthians 3.13. Yeah, I know I'm not dealing with no John 3.16 Christianity today, am I? I'm not dealing with no baby stuff today, am I? I'm not dealing with no kindergarten, first grade Christianity today, am I? I'm dealing with stuff that's a few grades higher, okay? First Corinthians 13, uh, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. Amplify, each one's work will be clearly shown for what it is for the day of judgment will disclose it because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality and character and worth of each person's work. Okay, do you understand that? Are you hearing what the Bible is saying? Okay, King James Version, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Do you understand what the Bible just told you? The Bible just told you that we have a date with a purging fire when we stand before God in judgment. Now, do you see why I tell you, you can't stay at a baby level in the scriptures your whole life. You can't be saved for 20 years and all you know is John 3, 16 and 1 John 4, 7, 8, and them's the only scriptures that you know? Yeah, no. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3, 13 just told you that after we die in the glory realm, there's gonna come a day of judgment where where the character and nature of our work, where, what that means is, did we honestly love the Lord? Did we honestly serve the Lord? Why did we do what we did on earth? How did we live? 
And if you phony, if you shake and bake, if you double-minded, if you are outwards are religiously, you know, trying to trying to propagate an image, you're concerned about the optics. You're trying to look saved. But in here, you don't bit more care about the Lord than my left shoe know how to be right. If you are not sincere from your heart serving God, if you're trying to glorify yourself, all that's coming out. And there's not one of us is going to escape that because the Bible says every man's work, that includes women too, it doesn't just mean every male, it means every human, every person. Everybody's work is going to be revealed. Oh, there's my cousin. Hey, Tracy. So glad to see you. <clears throat> Everybody's work is going to be revealed. Do you understand that? Do you understand? Do you understand that when people claim the name of Christ, but they're not really living for him, they ain't getting away with nothing. I know sometimes we get upset because we see people who say one thing and do another, who people who, who you know, prophesying and doing all this other stuff, but that's not really who they are as people. I know we get upset at that, but I stopped by to tell you, they ain't getting away with nothing because they none of us getting away with nothing because we have a date is not in this life. It's after you die. We have a date with God's purging fire because the Bible said that fire is going to reveal who we really are and what the nature of our work is and why we did what we did on earth. Do you understand that? Do you understand why it's foolish not to fear God? Do you understand that you can tell a lie your whole life? You can literally be 95 years old. You told a lie your whole life. Then you die. You thought you got away with it. Then you're going to stand before God. God going to show that lie up. That lie going to light up like a neon sign. God going to say, nope, here's the truth. Let that hit. Let that hit. Let that hit. Okay. And so this is why you have to study the Bible for yourself. This is why you have to seek the Lord for yourself. This because you have a date. That's why you don't need to be worrying, but you do need to protect yourself from creepers. It's because of creepers that we get abused. It's because of creepers that we get deceived. It's because of creepers that we get pulled off the path. And they, they have all kinds of mind games that they play. You ain't got to listen to none of that because they come to sow the devil seed in your life. They come to corrupt you. They come to bring, ain't gonna bring you nothing but destruction and ruin. Many of us have been touched by creepers. Some of y'all had that one bad relationship when you were young and it changed the entire trajectory of your life. Some of y'all got abused by parents or step parents. Some of y'all got abandoned. Some of y'all, you was on one path and then you started hanging around with the wrong crowd and they introduced all this stuff in your life and you still smoking today because somebody taught you to smoke when you was 12. And then people ain't in your life no more. I want you to think about that. But all that damage you did to your lungs is, just think about it, let that hit. Then people that taught you how to drink aren't in your life. In junior high school and high school and college, the, you know, you might still have one high school friend, you might still have one college friend, but the vast majority of the people who told you to drink, who taught you to drink, who told you you wasn't really living, you know, you were just a prude, you were just too conservative, all the people that tried to tear down your walls, then people aren't in your life right now, but the damage you did to your liver is. You wanted to have sex with bad boys, you wanted to have sex with bad girls, and then you had kids by them. Them people most likely are not in your life, but your kids have suffered their whole life because you didn't pick a better person to form a family with. Oh, that's right, I'm bringing it today. I told you this ain't John 3.16 today. That's right. So many of us have suffered from that and so many of us have done that because we got in relationships with people we didn't have no business being with. Then your kids gonna suffer. Your kids gonna suffer because you did not give them a family. Cause we wanted to be fast. We would that's what we used to call it old school. We wanted to be promiscuous. We thought we could lay around and play around. Then you fool around or you get some type of STD. You get something you can't get rid of. Now you got a lifetime bill for a few minutes of thrill. Think about it. Because the person that gave you that STD ain't in your life no more. But the STD still is. Let that hit. Them is creepers. 
That's why the Holy Ghost had me bring this prophetic word today. Because as believers, God is no, whatever we did in the past, we can't undo the past. We got to take it from this moment. God no longer wants us to be deceived by creepers. Some of y'all need unclean spirits broken out of you. Some of y'all don't know enough about demonology because some of y'all need uh, unclean spirits cast out. If you've got something like if you got headaches all the time and you got headaches you can't explain, or if you can't sleep, or you have something, a habit that seems like you can't break it. Like every time you try, it just keeps coming up. You need something broken off of you. That's an unclean spirit. That's something that through some kind of behavior got in your life. And now you need what we call deliverance ministry. That's where you call a demon out and you cast it out in the name of Jesus and it breaks off your life. And that can be any number of things. It can be depression. It can be suicide. It can be homicide. You have thoughts of hurting other people. Uh, thoughts of hurting yourself, cutting uh, any bad habits. Uh, it could be uh, pornography, anything that you're addicted to, anything that takes away your self-control. And you want to be free, but you can't break it. That's an unclean spirit. That's why we have to study demonology. The Lord told us to cast out unclean spirits. Well, that got in your life through behavior. You said something or you did something or somebody brought it to you and you accepted it. See what I mean? Them is creepers. Them is creepers. God ain't never meant for that to be in your life. God ain't never meant for nothing in your life to bind you. God ain't never meant for nothing in your life to bind you. God wants us to be bound to him. Okay? God wants us to be bound to him because being bound to him means we get set free. It's the most amazing thing. As, as Paul says, whoever is a slave to the Lord is a free man, which is true. Because when you listen to Jesus, he sets you free from anything that's got you in jail. And when you don't listen to Jesus, the whole bunch of stuff got you in jail, like unforgiveness, for example, because if you are in unforgiveness, you still mad at something that happened umpteen of Google years ago. You still in jail and that other person are going on about their business. Have you ever confronted a bully years later? Have you noticed most of the time they don't even remember because they forgot about you five minutes after they did it. They called you fat. They called you ugly. They beat you up. They did something stupid. Laugh with their friends. Five minutes later, they forgot. 20 years later, and you don't want to go back to your high school reunion because you're still mad. See, when, <laughs> when you're walking in unforgiveness and hurt like that, you're in jail. Not them. They ain't think about you. They wouldn't think about you five minutes after they did that. Okay? We're going to move to our next scripture. We're going to move to John 10. Okay? We're going to move to John, the Gospel of John, chapter Uh, uh, chapter 10, 1 through, I believe it's 7. Okay, Tracy, you said that's okay. What's okay? What are you talking about when you say that's okay? Tell me what you mean. When you say that's okay, tell me what that means, Tracy. Okay, so John 10, 1 through 7. We're going to read that. Listen to this right here. I'm reading out the New International Version. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not into the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I'm going to read a few more. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Okay, now I actually read John 10, 1 through 10, so I'm going to put that on the screen. Okay, once again, this these verses are action-packed. They're action-packed. Okay, these verses are action-packed. Okay, uh, so let's look at what the Lord just told us. The Lord told us that if you are trying to get to the sheep any other way, but climbs in by some other way other than the gate, why is the gate so significant? Because the Lord came through the gate of his flesh. 
He came through Mary's womb and became incarnated as a human like we are, which legitimizes him as a man on the earth, which is why he could pay for Adam's sin. He could not pay for it as God because a man is the one who sinned. That's why the son of God had to become a human like us because it would have been illegal for anything other than a man to pay because Adam, the first man, was the one that made sin enter. See, Jesus came through the gate of death because the Lord really died. All them people that are trying to get you to do stuff for you, next time they're trying to get you to do something, ask them to stick their hands out. Just stick your hands out, palms up. Do you see any nail prints in them hands? Then why would you listen to them over Jesus? Let that hit. Okay, so the Lord is the one who died. He died to prove his love. He died to show you, I can't love you any more than to give my life for you. He went through the gate of death. He got arrested. They beat him all night. See, people uh, don't know the whole story. When they arrested the Lord, it was at night and they beat him all night. And then they went to sleep. They got up the next day and beat him some more. Then they hung him on the cross. Okay. So this is a two day thing. All that didn't happen in the same day. When he got arrested at the Garden of Gethsemane after Judas kissed him and said, this is Jesus. He identified him. They arrested the Lord. They beat him and tore off his clothes and spit on him and mocked him or whatever that night. Then the next day, they got up and beat him some more. Then at nine o'clock in the morning, they hung him on the cross and he hung on the cross until three o'clock in the afternoon, six hours. That's how it happened. Okay, the Lord legitimately went through the gate of death. He went through the gate of death for you, for me. Then they took his body off the cross, put his body in the tomb because the spirit was in the lower regions of the earth. He was in Sheol, he was in hell. He was in the underworld where the dead, where the departed go, where the dead spirits go. He preached to them and said, I'm Messiah. And if you believe in me, you can follow me back up to the heavenly realm. And then he went, got back in his body and resurrected the third day. See, so the Lord legitimately is the savior. He was born of a woman. He was wrapped in human flesh. He died. He paid for sin. He preached to the dead and he resurrected. He's legit. That's what that means. So that's why the gate don't open for nobody but Jesus. So the Lord says anybody else that's trying to climb in so many people are trying to tell you that you can get in the kingdom of heaven any other way other than Jesus. The, the Lord said that's a thief and a robber because that's not the truth. I'm going to tell you one more time. Ask them to, to put their hands out. And let's see some nail prints if what they're saying is right. Because when Jesus holds his hand out, he shows you the nail print. To show, to show you that he's legit. He legitimately was a human. He legitimately died and he legitimately came back. What about all that other stuff they're talking about? Let that hit. So the Lord said, them is creepers. <laughs> they're trying to get to the sheep some other way besides him. They ain't trying to come through the gate. And the Lord says, when we listen to him, we follow him and he goes ahead of us. And we know his voice. And that's why you get to, got to get to know the voice of the Lord. And he said, we're never going to follow a stranger. We're going to run away because we don't recognize his voice. And it was a parable. It was a figure of speech. He was trying to demonstrate an eternal truth with something that they understood right in front of them. Okay. And the Lord said, he's the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. The, what's the difference between a thief and a robber? I told you last week. A robber gets in your face and said, give me your wallet, your credit cards, and all your jewelry. A thief waits, to, thief waits until you're not at home and breaks through the house while you're not there. So the Lord said, if they get in your face and put a gun in your face, or if they break in your house when you're not home, either way, the Lord said they're not legit, they're creepers. And the Lord said, you don't listen to them. You listen to me because what they're doing is trying to steal, kill, and destroy something inside of you. Now, I'm going to throw this out, okay? I'm going to throw this one out. Here it comes. Some people have been dream stealers. And some of them dream stealers have been your relatives. I told you, I'm going in today. It's not baby Christianity today. It ain't sucking on the, 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 the pacifier and eating the baby food today. No, it's real today. Some of them people are people you related to. They're dream stealers. Think about it. Think about that dream you had when you was a little kid 
And here they come with all the negativity and all the criticism and all they ever did was put you down and make you feel bad about yourself. And now you're not living the life that God wants you to live because you never developed that. God put that in your heart and God put that in your mind as a child and you never gave birth to it out here. That's because somebody came and snatched that dream right out of you. Mae Jemison didn't let anybody steal her dream to become the first female African-American astronaut. And she has her PhD. Mae Jemison didn't let anybody steal her dream. I'm sure there were plenty of people that told her, you can't do that because black women don't do that. She did it though, didn't she? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Some of them people as relatives, they did the same thing to Joseph in the Bible. You got to get that out your head. If God gave you a dream, if you're listening to me live or you're listening to me on the replay, if you're alive to hear my voice, then it's not too late. I don't care if you're 95 years old, it's not too late. Not too late. All the stuff that Moses did, he did between the ages of 80 and 120. Colonel Sanders, when he came up with his chicken recipe and was trying to establish Kentucky Fried Chicken, was 62 years of age. Okay? Abraham, when he fathered Isaac, the father of many nations, Abraham's the father of many nations, when he had his miracle baby, he was 100 years old and Sarah was 90. Do not tell me that it's too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Of course, you're going to have challenges. We face challenges at every age. Don't tell me that old age is a challenge. You're trying to say being young ain't a challenge? You're trying to say you didn't have no challenges when you was a kid. Everything was just fine and you just did everything fine. That ain't the truth. There's challenges at every stage of life. You can't use the fact that you have challenges as an excuse to not live your dream. If you're 13 years old and you got an idea for a business, everybody, you know, going to say, you're too young. To, you said you should just be young and just enjoy your life. God gave you that business so you could start building it when you was young. Because it's going to take 10 years to get off the ground. 13 to 23 is better. And so if you do it from 43 to 53, that's good. 13 to 23 would have been better. Remember, God gave it to you young because God wants you to birth it young. You can't be listening to folks that aren't speaking by the Holy Ghost. If they speak about the Holy Ghost, that's the Holy Ghost talking. You listen to that. Okay? Think about them dream stealers. They crept in your life. I've seen, because remember, I'm, uh, uh, I had a very successful private uh, piano and voice practice. So I gave individual lessons to people. Uh, I had lots of adult students. All of my adult students, without exception, said they were sorry that they stopped playing the piano. No exceptions. I mean, I had them from 32 to I think my oldest student was maybe in her 80s. Every adult that I ever taught piano to said, I'm sorry I stopped playing because you let somebody take your music out your life. So I tell parents when I'm working with very young people, I tell parents, make your child practice every day and tell your child never to give their instrument up. They'll regret it. You think your boyfriend is more important than your clarinet when you're 13. By the time you're 43, 30 years later, you probably ain't going to be with that boy and you will wish you could still play the clarinet. Let that hit. When you're 15, you don't want to look weak in front of your boys. And so you stop singing in the choir or you stop playing the piano because your boys told you you had to be a man and that's weak. And men don't do that stuff and we're going to do this other stuff. I stopped by to tell you, by the time you're 40, them males ain't going to be in your life and you will wish you could still play the piano. I know what I'm talking about. I don't think I'm right. I know I'm right. Okay? Because you let somebody creep up in your life and take the gift of God. God put music in your spirit. God put music in your hands. God put music in your mind. And you thought looking cool and you thought dating people was more important because most of us think that way as teens. That's why you have parents or other adults. Because as a professional music teacher, I can tell you without equivocation, hesitation, or apology, if you gave your instrument up, you will be sorry. So nothing wrong with having relationships, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with any stuff that you want to do, but don't give me music up. Because when you get to later stages of life, you're going to be sorry that you can't play it like you want to. I guarantee you. See, because you let something creep in your life and made you ignore the gift of God for that creep. And uh, one more thing, and we got to wrap up. Let me read one more scripture. Oh, see, oh, oh, Lord. This is one of my favorite scriptures. We're going to go to Matthew 
25. Okay, we're going to go to Matthew 25. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Okay, I'm putting that on the screen right now. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Okay. This is the parable of the virgins. I'm reading out of New International Version. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's a bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us, for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. There's a lot in there. I don't have time to unpack that whole. There's so much in there. I don't have time to unpack it. One of the reasons if you don't know why the Lord teaches in parables is because parables are timeless. When you tell a story, then wherever people read it two and three thousand years later, it's still a story. You'll get it. So the Lord uses stories to illustrate truths. There's a lot in that one. It's one of my favorites. But what I'll tell you on that story we just read about the, the virgins, five wise, five foolish. In those days, the bridegroom would come and get ready for the wedding and they could see him coming down the path and they would run out to meet him. What the Lord is saying is in that story, the lamp represents your life. The oil represents the Holy Ghost. So what the Lord was saying is that whenever he shows up in your life, he may not show up when you think he is. And you may think that God has taken a long time to manifest something in your life. But what he wants you to do is always be ready. Being ready in the eyes of God means staying filled with the Holy Ghost. Because when you stay filled with the Holy Ghost, when the Lord calls you, you're ready to go. Because you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You spend time with him every day. You spend time in the word every day. You surrender the control of your life to the Holy Ghost every day. So when the Lord is ready to move to something, he's looking for Christians that are always filled with the Holy Ghost. So you'll be ready to go. But he said, then, then there are them foolish Christians. Because remember, they all fell asleep. And at midnight, somebody said, the bridegroom comes and the foolish ones let their lamps go out. What does that represent? Christians that don't stay spirit filled. Christians that don't stay in the word. CMEs. <laughs> What's a CME? That means Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. They don't go to church but three times a year. <laughs> now, I know since COVID, I know none of us have been going to church like we used to. But you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about CMEs? Though they make a big show, they come on Easter, they got the big old hats. Because Black people love their hats. Black women love them hats. They come to church on Easter with them hats, and everybody got on that white and all that. Everybody strutting around like it's a fashion show. You ain't going to see them no more. Till Mother's Day. Then they come to Mother's Day in the church I grew up in. We wore roses to signify whether our mother was alive or not. Red if she was alive, white if she had passed on. Then they come in because they are we going to church with mom and them because it's Mother's Day. And all the, you know, so many families in church. You don't have room. You ain't going to see them no more till Christmas, till Jesus' birthday, three times a year. CMEs. So in other words, people that don't talk to the Lord, they don't have a walk with God. They don't stay filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't stay in the word. They just show up on occasion. You can't stay in step with the Lord like that. You can't talk to Jesus three times a year and think you're going to be in sync with what he's doing. You don't get the most out of your relationship with Christ by being occasional with the Lord. That's what it means to let your lamb go out. At one point, he's on fire for Christ, and then you let that die down. At one point, you love the Lord more than you do now. You was on fire, and then you just let it die down. You're out of sync with him. That means he's moving with stuff, and when he shows up, you're going to turn into a creeper. Talk about, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. This is people. These are Christians. He's not talking to sinners. That's why this parable is so deep. He's not talking to unbelievers because they wouldn't have the oil of the Holy Ghost. He's talking to Christians. 
Why do you think there are so many Christians who are trying to get into a blessing, but they don't have access to the blessing because they let the order of the Holy Ghost die in their lives? That's why. That's how a whole lot of women miss their husbands. They just stay filled with the Holy Ghost. When your husband comes in your life, you won't be able to discern him naturally. You can't look at a man and tell whether or not you can marry him. A uh, spouse has to be discerned in the spirit. You won't be able to do that if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you didn't know that. Same is true with uh, any apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, okay? The Holy Ghost in you will give a witness to what they're saying. That's why I told you, you test what people say. You don't have to take what they say. Go to the word yourself. Why do you think I put the scriptures on the screen? So you see the number one, I'm not making this stuff up. Number two, you can read it for yourself. But you got the same Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, if somebody's speaking by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost in you will give a witness to the Holy Ghost in them and what's coming out of your mouth every time. Because the Spirit of God will confirm when it's him talking. But if you don't stay spirit-filled, you don't know what I'm talking about. And you can hear the word, hear the word, hear the word. Amen, pastor. Who pastor preaching today? Go ahead, pastor. And it doesn't mean nothing to you because you're not actually spirit filled. That's how you can go to church for 30 years and not change. You know folks like that. You know folks, you've known them your whole life. They're the same person now as they were when you are a little kid. How are you going to go to church for 20, 30 years and you don't change? Because the, <laughs> the word is what does the change. It's not you. You got to let the word, you got to let the Lord have his way. You got to let the word be the Lord over your life. You got to let the Holy Ghost fill you and take control. But for Christians whose lamps have gone out, the Holy Ghost is resident, but he's not president. And when you live like that as a believer, you are never going to get into the blessings of Christ. Those are only for people that stay filled with the Holy Ghost because they're ready to move when the Lord says move. Hmm. So I'm going to end it right there uh, because we're coming up on our time. There's a lot more I can say on that. But today's prophetic word was about creepers, was about people and things and unclean spirits and sometimes even your own relatives and your so-called friends who have brought stuff in your life and has led to nothing but destruction. That wasn't from God. It was creepers. And we have to be on guard. Now, the reason that's so important is because I will repeat, I said it earlier. Now, if you're coming onto the broadcast late, go back to the beginning of this and watch this from the beginning. The reason that's, ooh, I'm sorry, my stomach is growling. I'm sorry if you heard that, I'm hungry. <laughs> the reason that's so important is because there are some of y'all watching me live and some of y'all watching me on the replay. There are great blessings already in your life and there are great blessings coming down the pipe. The reason that the Holy Ghost gave me this word is because he's warning us ahead of time that you better watch out for them creepers. Don't let anybody come in your life and mess up your marriage. Don't let anybody come in your life and mess up your relationship with your children. Don't let anybody come in your life and mess up your job because some of us have had to fight hard for the jobs we got. Some of us have been through hell and high water. How you gonna let somebody come to somebody, they, they're gonna try to creep in. They're gonna try to creep in and mess it up, that's coming. That's why the Holy Ghost had me give this message. That's why my heart breaks for people that don't listen to the prophetic. That's why my heart breaks for people that don't believe in the prophetic. That's why my heart breaks for people that will not receive from the prophetic because the Lord is trying to warn you about something before it happens. And if you are not spirit filled and you don't let, because remember, it's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will give you a witness out of what's coming out of my mouth. It's not me, David. It's the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God in you will give a witness to what the spirit of God in me is saying. And the Holy Ghost is trying to warn us not to let them creepers push up in your life. That's coming. It's coming. Okay. But now that we know, now that we're armed with truth, now that we know they ain't doing nothing but try to destroy, they ain't do nothing but try to take, they ain't doing nothing but try to be a dream killer. OK, I talk about that all the time with my friends, one friend in particular. I'm like, don't be listening to them dream killers. Don't be listening to them dream snatchers. Then people, they ain't doing nothing with their life. Have you noticed anybody that's doing something with their life got something good to say because they're happy about what they're doing? It's them people ain't doing nothing, always bad mouthing. Let that hit. OK, them is creepers. Don't listen to that. 
is coming at you, but we can win. The Holy Ghost helps us see the devil coming. We do this prophetic word today. Now we already know that the devil going to try to creep. Now we're ready. We can get that shield of faith up and say, I ain't listening to you. You ain't taking my reputation from me. You ain't taking my family from me. You ain't taking my career from me. You ain't taking my, you ain't taking nothing from me because I know what you are. You're a creeper because I heard the prophetic word and I ain't let no creeper steal, kill, or destroy in my life. Good God Almighty. All right. And we hit it right there. So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Anything you want me to pray for, let me pray for that right now. And um, the uh, one thing I want you to do, remember I told you in every a video I do, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. My goal for 2021 is to increase my reach. The reason I want to increase my reach is not for me, but so that when the spirit of God gives a prophetic word, as many people as possible can hear it. Because just like evangelists, just like pastors, just like teachers, the body of Christ needs prophets and the body of Christ needs apostles. We need to hear the prophetic word, just like we hear the evangelistic word, just like we hear the pastoral word. We need the prophetic word, same way. It's the same thing. So I want you to share this video as in many places as you can. So as many believers as possible and sinners too, so the spirit of God can bring conviction so they can realize that they don't wanna live their life without Christ one more day. Share this video as many places as you can. Eventually I'll get it up on YouTube. Um, I'm still trying to play catch up <laughs> with all that. I'm still trying to get on my videos. I still have some stuff from last year I haven't put up yet. I know that, but I'm trying to play catch up on my YouTube channel, but eventually I will get this on YouTube. But for right now, share this Facebook live video so that as many people as possible that can receive the prophetic can realize that we need to be on guard for all the good things God has put in our life and, and keeping creepers out. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't see any prayer requests. So I'm going to go ahead on to close out. Thank you so much to those of you that watch me live. Oh, that's right. If you want to bless me financially, uh, some people have asked me how to bless me financially because they want to sow into my ministry. So you can just actually send it straight to my uh, email. So I'll put my email address in the chat. I do not do what I do for money. I do what I do because the Lord tell me to in my service to the Lord. But some people have definitely said they would like to sow into my ministry. So you can send it straight to Zelle. I use Zelle because other apps take out fees. There's no fees in Zelle. It just goes straight from bank to bank. And I've heard certain other apps are kind of shady. So I'm not fooling with shady stuff. You know, that's a creeper. That's somebody trying to hold your money and charge fees and all that. And don't fool with that. Fool with something that's just going to be straight. Okay. All right. A straight transaction. No, no shadiness. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, amen and God bless. And remember, we're going to be on guard for creepers. We're going to protect the good things that God has given us. And we're going to let the witness of the Holy Ghost guide us. From, we're not going to let our lamp go out. We're going to stay full of the Spirit. So we're going to let the witness of the Holy Ghost guide us in all that we do. Okay. All right. Amen. God bless. I will see you same time next week uh, for the next weekly live prophetic uh, word. 2.30 p.m. next Sunday, May 9th. Amen and God bless.